we get a sailboat Chasing down the sunset as we float Round and round the globe This is Margarita, the normal one in a not quite normal marriage. And this is Peter. He's a little bit different, which keeps me on my toes. Together we are on an adventure that didn't work out as planned, but we are fighting back, so come join us! Bit of a sleepless night last night. Uh, Definitely something is going on here. We had a boat at about 2 a.m. come through really close to us. We're in the middle of this lagoon. There's no one around. There's coral heads everywhere. The only place to get in the reef is over there. I really ought to point out that it isn't really a channel at all. Just a section of reef that is about six inches lower than the rest. We are anchored here and this is the channel. So at low tide you can't really come in. You can only really come in at high tide, which is about a foot high. At night, it would be suicidal unless you had a very shallow draft, a good GPS, calm conditions, and a light. I heard them coming from the north, so they must have come from here. But there's no one usually anchored here. This is a very unpopular anchorage. So they actually came really close to the boat, and I went, oh, gee, what? we don't have any uh, mast light on because we don't want to advertise anything here. No one's going to be here. No one's going to come here in the middle of the night. Well, someone did. And then I got up and they'd actually disappeared. So I think uh, they actually came close to us. Uh, there was no moon, of course. So they didn't even know and they came past. Then they probably would have known because I've got the uh, voltmeter on and it gives off a bit of light. So you'll see that through the windows. And um, then I got up and I checked out that island over there. Um, and there were lights on that island um, about half an hour later so something is suspicious here and of course I couldn't sleep after that because I didn't know what was going on so a bit of interesting I hope Marguerite is still sleeping because she's exhausted because I kept on getting up and um, sussing out the situation the best way to de-stress is to go for a spear whoa this is a bit shallow and not really de-stressing at all Bit distressing. Ah, deep water. That's better. Find a spot and let's get into it. Aha, we got a dog snapper on the run. It's highly unlikely I'll get close to it, and it looks a bit big in any case. Not very close at all. Whoa, another doggy. And now there's two pairs of eyes looking at my feeble attempts to get close. I think we need to go somewhere else. Okay, there is one dog snapper there. And there's another. Now I'm right out at the back, making my way towards this GoPro. And here's another dog snapper. And there is the GoPro. Now I've done so many things wrong here that it's not funny and I really ought to give up and start a whole new stalk. But sometimes it's good to be a bit pig-headed and stupid and just keep going. I really didn't deserve that at all. Let's see if I can be a bit more clever next time. Don't count on it. We are feeding another boat today, so we need another fish, so let's keep going.
too easy. Let's leave for another day. I have to keep an eye out on this one racing from behind because it's larger. And I really only just want the smaller one here. I wasn't really ready, but I had to shoot then because I reckon two blinks of an eye later and it would have been two fish on one spear. Perhaps an hour ago when I first started, I may have gone for both with one shot, but since I already had more than enough for me and my friend, it was a no-go. And it's just as well because two fish struggling on one line takes way longer to subdue and kill. Look what happens next. A magnificent hammerhead shark. How awesome. Don't look right. The bloody shark is left, you turkey. That's better. That's karma right there, people. I'm glad I didn't go for both. Or maybe one hand less. All right, this is an excellent spot. We got a fish for Yakov. He's got guests on board and he's hurt his back. So you can't go spearing. Bloody great spot. Hammerhead right there. Oh, like I was shallow, but it was really shallow. And then it circled me, came in from behind. By the time I got the camera on, it was on the side and started to swim off. That's the third big hammerhead I've ever seen. And it's just an excellent thing to see. So I'm definitely coming back here. This is a great spot. I remember the very first hammerhead shark I saw. And it was, in fact, the biggest shark at the time I've ever seen. Um, I was only 19. I was re relatively inexperienced spearfishing. And um, I was off uh, a place called Lady Musgrave Island off the Queensland coast in Australia by myself spearing, as per usual, about half an hour before sunset. I was about 300 metres off the reef edge, a place called the Manor Bombies, shallow, 6 to 10 metres. Sun's going down, I'd already shot three Golden Trevally about this big and they were sitting at the end of my float line. Float line is the thing that's attached to your gun with a float on it and all the fish hang at the end so it keeps the sharks away from you and uh, lets them eat the, the, the fish at their leisure. Anyway, I was swimming in and um, every so often as you're swimming you, you stick your head between your legs, you look down the float line and check out that there's nothing going to bite your dinner. And that's what I was doing because uh, sometimes you have to go back and chase it off because you know sharks want a free meal, they're not stupid. Quite often they listen for their and then they come around. So they're, they're pretty smart. And so I was swimming in and I, I was looking one time, looking at, between my legs, and I saw this massive, what I thought was this massive hump turtle. Now turtles have normally got a hump like that, but this was like this. And I thought it was a turtle because I could see the flippers out the side sticking out horizontally. I went, far out, that's one big turtle. Oh well, it's a turtle. Did a couple more uh, kicks and then looked again and in that time, this monster of a hammerhead shark had come and swum practically up to the end of my fins just to have a look at me. Now, the thing that struck me first was its girth. It was like, it, I just couldn't believe how big it was. I mean, it was like a VW that you stuck a fin on, two pecs, a hammer looking head and a tail. And that, to me, was what it was like. It was just so fat. Anyway, so it came up. I turned the gun on it, it turned on the side, and then the next thing that really freaked me out, that I really noticed, was that the dorsal fin on hammerheads is disproportionately large. This, no joke, you're not gonna believe me, was about four foot long. It was huge, it was half sticking out of the water. And that's what freaked me out, because it was this huge curved scimitar, like a sword, and I had nightmares for like three years, and that's the thing that stuck in my head, this blade of this dorsal fin. Anyway, it went on its side, and I sort of scared it off, but it gave it a nice little kick, and with the sun going down, all these little droplets, and I remember this distinctly, this little sparkles glistening as they were hitting me on my mask on the top of my head. I don't know why I was remembering that, but I guess that I thought that these were my last moments, and I was just remembering everything. And so, and it nicked off and I went alright and so I started swimming along and all of a sudden it came in at a different direction, came around me, shot water over me again and then nicked off again. And it kept on going, doing this for 40 minutes. It hounded me until I got 
and the sun had gone down, just gone down, and I'd swum into this sort of a bay, it was about 30 metres across, and it couldn't come in, at, I guess it couldn't come in at all the different angles anymore, and it started to get more agitated, you could see it, it was flicking its tail more aggressively, and um, I thought, oh Jesus, and it started getting, it was about five metres, four metres deep, and so I swam a little bit more, it came in again, again I shot, I didn't shoot it, I scared it off, and then I said, bugger this, and I dropped my gun, and I dived to the bottom, and I found the crack, and I just pulled myself along the crack, got to the drop off, which is like a sheer face, climbed up that, and then I hoped to just jump on, on the top of the reef, and it'd be dry, but of course, at that point, it wasn't, it was still about three foot deep, and it tapered off to the reef crest. So I got to the top and I was clawing myself along the coral and I looked behind and I just got over the, the edge and this hammerhead was right on my fins. Right on my fins, just looking at me. Anyway, I madly scrambled and it turned away and I sat on that reef crest for another 15 minutes and this hammerhead just went backwards and forwards backwards and forwards right in front of me. The most peculiar behavior I've ever had or ever had on any shark really. Didn't care about the fish, didn't go for the fish now. Anyway, two fishermen turned up that were fishing further up, they were walking back and um, we waited for the hammerhead to go out of the bay and go up a little bit. I guess it was still looking for me. And then I, I jumped in and manly grabbed my gear and came back which is one of the hardest things I ever had to do. Ah, here we have good food and good people. And then there's me with my carcass. But before you say Neanderthal, I have a kindred spirit right here next to me. And she began helping me demolish the carcass. Good on you Susie from Distant Drummer. And she also shares the eyeballs too. What a trooper! We have lost the path and we are surrounded by a fog. Our future is uncertain. But as long as we have breath in our lungs, we will fight on. You and your bloody path. It's not even a good day to film. Quiet, you. But wait, it is becoming clearer. What is this? A clear path before us. It's clear to me that you're bloody delusional. Quiet, you. Still filming. The path is before us, and we must follow it no matter how long it takes. This path fixation is nonsense. All you do is find a long cave and swim through it and then film it. Quiet. It's a metaphor. The path is long, but we have no other choice open to us. There is no turning back. No choice? No turning back? Just turn off the bloody camera. That ought to do it. Quiet. A serious ad campaign. The path keeps going and bloody hell, this is one long tunnel, I'll give it that. Maybe you should have wrecked it first. Yes, maybe I should have, but the path is still long. Well, longer than I expected, but we must follow it nonetheless. Boy, this is the friggin' longest tunnel ever. But wait, I can see something. Yes. Can it be true? Yes, it is. It is the key to our salvation. Oh, this is crap. I can see the lead weight stuck on the back of the beer. If you can't say anything positive, then don't say anything at all, my mother used to say. So shush, you. Ah, right. Where was I? Aha! Nothing can stop us now. Nothing! I can still see the lead weight at the back of the beer. What kind of amateur operation is this? Silence! I've had quite enough of you. I ban you to the netherworld. Right. Where was I? Aha! 
Nothing can stop us now. Nothing. Just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yes. 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 Oh, bugger.